Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about mid and senior level developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, if someone is a mid to senior level software engineer, how would they best present proof to someone hiring a, for a contract position that they are such and such? Well, you're gonna have a lot easier, a lot easier for time to prove that you are an experienced or senior sort of developer if you have a CV that very clearly proves it. That's definitely the best thing that you can possibly do. I would even go as far as to say that the only thing that can truly that will ever give anybody cause to believe that you are a senior developer just from the first thing, which is basically just looking at the CV, is prior experiences because that's what we're looking like that's what the majority of people who are looking for software developers who actually know, who actually know what they're looking for what what they're going to check i would say that it's really easy to swing that you're a junior you just have to basically say that you know a few tools and you're going to be assumed that you're going to be a junior age can factor in as well here i mean if you're a 20 something and you know i don't know the mean stack and you have no pro like you don't state anything else, then nobody is going to assume that you are a senior developer. No discussion at all. You're going to be assumed to be a junior. If you're like, uh, I mean, if you're older, the age prejudice might kick in and they might go, okay, this person is a little bit old to be a junior, but they don't list anything else. Uh, I don't really know what to do with this. It might be a senior, it might not. However, if you have a very clearly a clear outline of places or projects that you've been working on and here it comes uh, here things like how long have you been working there what have you been doing and things like that starts to factoring a lot of the subjective gut feelings of the person doing the evaluation is going to start kicking in here this is where you usually get uh, the, where you get the best chance to present that you are actually an experienced developer you need to have something to prove it I would even go as far as to say that it's going to be hard for you to prove uh, definitively that you are a experienced developer by just showing off like portfolio things. You have to be, a, I would say that you have to go more towards I am a businessman or woman. You're like a serious, uh, a serious uh, developer who has been part of serious projects versus I know these skills. Because I mean, another thing that you can of course do is to just, if you have a, uh, usually two things matter when we try to es estimate a person's experience level uh, in terms of seniority. One part is, as I said, the years, like the time you've spent on projects and so forth. The other part is how diverse are you? If you claim that you know a very large range of tools, here the age thing comes in again, ain't nobody's gonna believe a 20-something 20, 20 uh, person, for the most case at the very least, who has like, I don't know, every, every single tool under the sun is actually a master of all of these things. If you have, uh, uh, and at the same time, even someone who's a little bit older might have a hard time swinging that they're a master of all of these tools if they don't have any actual concrete places they've been doing work. That's why, as I said, like the strongest argument is really what have you been doing up until this point? But the diversity does weigh in heavily as well. The perfect, well, the perfect presentation that you can make, the, the thing that will get people is the trifecta of getting the highest pay and the best contracts is going to be if you have proof, real concrete pr proof that you have been involved in projects that are serious, ideally very close to the thing that they're hiring for, that's the best thing. And that's number one. Number two is that you are diverse, you've seen the world, you have proof of skill, uh, a range of skills. Ideally, you I mean, you can be a specialist, of course, as well, but what you're going for is that they want real concrete proof of skill here. And diversity, listing a lot of tools is a good thing here, or having, I don't know, awards or stuff like that, like something that is impressive in a very specific area. If you're m part of some prestigious group or I don't know, a standards committee, whatever, right? These things are gonna sell you. Like the same thing goes with education, things like that. It shows quality, quality of person versus width. And both of these things can work really well in your favor. Lastly, if you have these two, I can guarantee you that you have the best position, you're in the best position to get the call from somebody, definitely. The last thing that ne needs to happen now is that you need to prove through your social interactions with this individual who's going to hire you for this contract position that you know your shit.
because there's a lingo like experienced people they act in a certain way inexperienced people work uh, usually act in another way and in many cases uh, if you are really unlucky you're dealing with the person who has a fair level of high of emotional intelligence and they will be able to spot if you're trying to fake it it's really hard to fake experience uh, when you're dealing with someone who sort of knows what they're doing so what i want you to take away from this is that if you want to put yourself in the best position possible to get hired as a senior or mid-level software engineer on a contract or a freelancing gig or something like that the best bet for you is to have proof of skill you need to, like, because uh, it's when you're hiring someone for a contract or something like that you re and you're looking for a senior you're you are in more interested in the quality of the person than what skills they might have that's the thing that you're looking for you're trying to find an individual who has basically done enough work or done been in the business and done enough so that you're practically guaranteed that they know what they're doing. It's the trust thing. You're trying to get trust with or and build trust with the person who's doing the hiring. And that's what you get when you hire a, profe a, a serious senior or a, a decent mid-level. You get trust that they know what they're doing. And you give that, you communicate that through proof from your CV that you've been part of serious products, ideally things that are very close to the thing that they are, they are doing. Thing number two is that you have proof of skill. You know they, you know either a lot of tools or you know some tools really, really well. If you can prove that in some way, either through a personal website with a lot of blog articles, or ideally if you're part of some prestigious group, or you're you're associated with something that is of note, something that people actually consider. Okay, this gives credit to the claim that you are making that you have these skills. That's a very good thing. Third and lastly, once you have those two things, you will be in a very good position to actually get to talk to people. And now you need, really need to drive the thing home. Now you make the sell. This is the thing that's going to dictate if you get the job or not. How well can you communicate how good you are? Without, I mean, I'm not saying brag here. I'm saying, can you talk as people would expect a senior to talk? Because if you come in there and you're super nervous and like so forth, uh, you're damaging your chances. Because remember, what they're after is trust. They want to trust, be able to trust that if you, I'm going to give this product to this random person, because ideally, if you're uh, likely you're going to work alone or it might be all kinds of situations, right? Then they basically they are completely trusting that you know what you're doing, and you need to m make that sell. You need to sell them that you are trustworthy and you know what you're doing. Soothe their fears and you do that the best by having a good conversation going with them and having the social skills to actually talk in the way a senior or mid-level like an experienced developer uh, communicates. Have a great day.